morning. Um, what I'm hoping to accomplish here is to show you start to finish how I um, do a journal. I was inspired by some digitals um, by Victoria Designs. I've got right here and I downloaded those yesterday and printed some out. <clears throat> this is for an envelopes and I did two of each one and I did them on a cream colored paper thinking that because um, all I have is an inkjet printer so I printed these out at, on a laser printer at work um, because once I coffee dye papers it's difficult to get them through my printer I don't know I iron them but they st it's still pretty difficult so anyways these are the papers that I printed out I reduced one of the one of these is a reduction I think oh this one I reduced it a little bit um, because I wasn't sure how big I wanted to to do it and I love this paper look at this paper so anyways I printed a few of each different different ones that they had and then I was actually sitting here getting ready to cut them down and I wasn't sure um, what size journal I wanted to do so I had actually cut one and left an edge on it normally the journals that I do are made out of cheese it boxes so I just you know obviously open it up cut off the one end when you there's a tab where it when the box closes like this, there is in a little tab, I undo that, cut that end off, and then kind of square it up. Um, and then I just make sure that I measure from the inside out um, to make sure that these are both the same length. If I want to, this right here will hold easily um, four signatures. I've done five or six depending on how full you want it to be, and they are a thick journal. So, you have a couple options if you want to make a thinner journal with maybe just a couple signatures, would be either to cut this and make this smaller, narrower, and uh, I can show you that on another video, or um, this is a different box, so it is narrower, a little narrower, but this is Townhouse Crackers box. So I cut that down and I was just, when I decided to film, I wanted to measure this in this box and I think this paper will fit. So I wanted to take a little bit off the end. So I marked each of the ends and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. Get my cutter here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. I, I marked the line. I think I got that lined up good. And then if I actually make the journal this size, okay, I'm looking at this page and we obviously want some space here, good. But we also want some space at the top of the bottom, in the bottom. But I left some uh, leftover page in there. So I'm thinking that if I trim that down a little, it might fit better. I'm not as concerned about the top and the bottom as I am with this width because once you get a bunch of papers together, um, let me show you, I've got a journal cover here that I started and I've got some pages folded but you'll notice that if you once you start folding the pages they start getting like uneven because you know they're thicker in here so with that in mind I'm just a little bit more concerned about the depth here so I'm gonna just trim the top off a little and the bottom as well. This piece of paper in particular, this design has a 
frame on it, so you don't want to take too much off. I guess I could remove the frame. That wouldn't hurt at all. And then I do want to just trim off this edge here. Um, my blade's not real sharp, so I'm thinking I might just use my scissors um, to, to trim this. I just want to see if the size works okay. And if it does, then I will go ahead and cut the other papers to match and maybe I'll do one on camera and the rest off so that you can so you're not like just sitting here watching me cut okay so looking at this I think that that'll be a pretty good size um, I think we're good so knowing that that's a good size I just want to measure it real quick so it cut down to seven and seven eighths so it's seven and seven eighths by about five and an eighth. And that should fit in, in this book. But I, remember, I did cut the end off of this to make it narrower. So that should fit perfect. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and um, trim down these other sheets. And then I'll be right back and we'll see how they fit. Okay, hey, we're back. I've got um, I've got most of them cut. I just wanted to do the last couple on camera. And what I'm doing is my blade is not terrifically sharp here, and I uh, can still get some use out of it. But I need to cut at least two sheets. So what I'm doing is just cutting the same sheets on here and trying to be real careful that I don't mutilate them and get a little extra on my blade. Um, like I said, this set is from Victoria Designs. I got it on Etsy and I will, um, put their uh, Etsy shop or their website on below in the comments section or the description i'm sorry in the description section so if you're interested usually i don't ever use just um you know one set of papers i'll combine either papers that i've made or scrapbook papers that i've purchased in the past or uh, jelly printed papers so usually my journals consist of a lot of different papers so that's all the papers let me move this aside that I have and what I did is just to make sure these were the first papers that I cut and folded just to make sure that they fit okay they're a little bit different in size depends how I printed them and to be honest with you I normally like to do two journals at one time it makes it easier um, or I will use duplicates in my signatures um, in one journal. So very rarely do you see me not doing two at the same time. So these two here, all I'm doing is folding them in half. Sometimes if they're not cut exactly even, I can, uh, when I ink the edges, that kind of masks that. So I'm not real concerned when I, I want to make sure that at least one edge is fairly even when I fold it. And these two papers here that are the exact same as these because I love them, so I printed a couple extras. Um, I'm going to not fold because I don't know if I want to use them as additional pages or maybe if I want to use them for, um, you know, to make tags, embellishments, something like that out of them. So I've got all these folded. And then the next step is you have to kind of decide the order that you want your pages in. So 
Um, what I normally do is just take them and put them in. Like I would put this one in here and put this one in here. I can change them out when I see how they work in the journal. Um, I mean, you can put these on the outside. It really doesn't matter. Um, but you'll find as you're going along, you may want to change them. You'll find ones that you know work in a better space than another. You might want to take some totally out um, and use different papers. Um, if I'm going to make uh, a couple of different signatures, once I get these put together, I might decide I want to put eight pages in a signature. Then I'll start pulling them out and create a different signature. So, um, so for right now, I'm just going to get them together so I have all the different ones in each journal. Okay, so I've got those together, okay? And one of the things that I um, usually do in the beginning is I, when I decide on a theme, I can usually pick a covering for my journal cover. But I wasn't really sure, and I tend to just use what I have on hand, uh, material that I have on hand. So I'm gonna need to pick a uh, a material for this. So, um, I'm just starting with journal making, so I don't have a lot of different materials. So, um, if you see, I've got a bucket here with some materials in it um, and I'll let's see what we have I have this which is a fabric woman that's kind of pretty um, oh that might be nice because it's got the gold in it and then I could go with more of a uh, I've got these which I don't think really go because there's so much white in these. Um, I have this, which is not really vintagey. I have this one, black and gold. That might work. I use this material here on my granddaughter's Alice in Wonderland journals. And then I have this one here, which is kind of pretty. I might be able to combine and make gold. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I could do a combination of these two here. I don't know. That's pretty. Anyways, I think I'm gonna go with, let me open this one up and let's look at this and see. This was a remnant, so it's all folded up here. Let's see. Oh, it's kind of pretty. <gasps> wow, I really like it, but Wow, I could really introduce some other colors into the journal, a lot of other colors, like, you know, this color here, greens. It already has the yellow and the golds, or I could stick with this, which is nice, but kind of plain, huh? I don't know. 
I wish I could see your comments, see what you guys think. Let me um, just put this in here. And I want to just wrap it a little bit so I can see what the pages will look like if I do that. Oh, that's kind of pretty, huh? I really do like that. So I think we're going to go with this one. Let me get this put away. Okay, I'm going to drink my coffee. When I make a cover, it's pretty easy. I um, I don't really measure. I just use my the box that I'm going to use as my pattern. So I just lay it on top of the material. So I want to just open my material up, see what we got here. What I do is I cover the outside and then the inside I use material and or paper as an inside. But I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think of the best way to use this fabric where I am um, not wasting much. And I think if I use See how wide this is. I don't need it very wide. So I'm thinking that I could really just use a portion of this. I'm not going to look at the design <laughs> because I'm afraid that that will influence then again where I cut it and I might not work on saving material. So I'm just going to lay it on here and um, And I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to, let me measure for you if I have my ruler here. I'll find where my ruler is. Oh my heck. Okay, I just had it, so let's see. To give you an idea of about how much, I'm just eyeballing this, but I wanted to give you an idea of about how much. So it's about an inch and a quarter inch and an eighth, so uh, give or take, about an inch and an eighth or more you want around the edges. Okay, so this is what we have right here in this piece. <gasps> so pretty. So I'm gonna turn it over. Again, I don't wanna pay attention to that design or I'll end up changing my mind about everything. And I'm gonna lay this in here. And then what we're gonna do is glue this, okay? And it's gonna create a cover for us. Ooh, it's gonna be pretty. Okay. I'm gonna get my... Because there's a natural fold in the material I didn't iron it. I'm going to go ahead and move my cover right down to that fold. There. Okay. And I think that's where that's where I will start. So what I want to do though is I want to round these corners off a little. Okay. I want to kind of cut a little bit into the corner so that they um, when I when I put this on I'll have a good edge on the corner so I'm gonna 
like that a little bit right over there. Okay, now I'll do the same to this corner here. And then I'm using Fabri-Tac. Make sure I got enough to And what I want to do is I want to put my fabric tack on here. The outside of my, I may need to get my other one, but I want to put it on the outside of my cover. I'm putting a lot on to hold it, but really I'm not totally covering it um, because you don't want the glue to show through. And when I pull the edges around the other side, that's really what's gonna hold it uh, tight. But I wanna make sure that I have enough on to hold it um, till I can get to that point. So there we go. So I wanna make sure that I put my my edge here down into where this is folded up. Okay, we want to get our corner in. Good. This one could come down just a hair. There. Okay, so then I want to turn it over and I want to make sure that I've got it all. So there's some glue coming through so you have to just be really careful with it. I don't want to smear that too much. And this is the most important part. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this bottom edge. turn it around and we will glue this edge here glue here, but I think that that will be covered, yeah, oh, very pretty, okay, so now we want to do these edges right here, so what I'm going to do here is put the glue on the material here, just along here a little bit. The 
one thin line there. And the reason I did that is so that this material will pull up. And I know I've got a good, snug, tight uh, fit here. I want to make sure that that goes in. Same here. I'm going to just put some on. Whoops. Get some of that off of there. Okay. Put some right on here. And then on the material up here. So, I think I like this side. I don't know. This side's pretty, but I've got a little glue coming through, so I might use this side because when I put my front on it, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So, now we have to pick a paper for this inside. And what I normally do is try to reinforce this a little bit and I have some linen tape let's find it I reinforce what I want to do is reinforce this so that um, when we sew the signatures in it just doesn't totally rip that cardboard so I'm gonna put a piece in here just a little bit shy of the top and the bottom Maybe like that and then we'll cut another piece about the same size. And we'll probably try to even out those edges. <laughs> uh, like that. Okay. And then this one. Like that. Perfect. This is self-adhesive hinging tape. And uh, by Linco. It's for doing mats, but it works really good for this purpose. And it's going to be under the paper, so I have nails, and yet I still can't get it undone. Ugh. What the heck? There we go. You can't see that, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna lay this inside the, the score, so I don't want it to impede that or interfere with that. And so we're just gonna lay it there. Okay, and then we'll do the other one. And that'll give us some reinforcement there on that, on this edge, before we put the paper on. There. Okay. Now, we need to pick 
pick. Actually, let me think about this just for a second. We could actually use a piece of this and then I could choose a different paper for this. So what if we, yes, what if we cut this one? I might want to use something a little heavier than this. So hold on, let me go pick a different paper that might be a little heavier. Kind of pretty, a little bit plain, but look, if we did, this one would be pretty, huh? So what we want to do is cut this one so that we can use it for half here and half here, and then we'll, let's see. So right now, this, in order to use this, I need a piece that is about seven and three quarters by five and a quarter. So seven and three quarters by five and a quarter. So we should be able to go seven and three quarters this way. Let me do it this way so I can. I do seven and three quarters. This way. No, oh, I need to go this way. <laughs> okay, seven and three quarters. This way. Quarters by, let's say five and a quarter. Use this one. So we want to do, oh, we want to do five and a quarter this way. So five. And I'm going to actually do like five and three eighths like this, just to be, because I just need to be sure. I'm always so afraid that I'm going to cut something too small. I'd rather trim it out than have it be too small. So let's see. I think that's going to be perfect. Yes, see? So five and three eighths is perfect. So let's do this one, five and three eighths. One, two, three eighths, like that. So they'll both be the same. I'm going to save this piece because it matches what we're doing. So now, this one will go here. Perfect. So now I just need a piece that goes, you know, over the linen, but it needs to overlap these, okay? So I could use the same. I could use something different. Or I could use a lighter one, but I kind of, I think I want, I'm going to keep it the same, I think. I think I like that in there. So what I need to do is, we know that this is, <laughs> we did know that that was seven and three quarters. So I need seven and three quarters long. Okay. So if I go seven and three quarters long, And then actually, all I want to do is trim, if I trim just, if I just trim this off, I think that it will overlap enough. So I'm just going to trim 
this right here where the hole is punched. You turn that off. Perfect. So then I should be able to put this here. Perfect. This one will then go right over here. And I just want to line up my top and my bottom so it makes sure that they fit well. And this one will go right there. So I'll have to line those up. But the most important piece is this one right here. So I want to, this is where, this right here is where I need to score my center. So my spine is two and a half inches. So I need two and a half inches in the middle of this and I need it scored. This piece right here is four and a quarter. So this is where you're testing my math. So four and a quarter, let me get a piece here. I'm gonna write in here. So 4.25 minus two and a half is one, five from 12, 1.75. So one and three quarters, I have to split evenly between the two edges. So if I take 1.75 and divide it by two, okay, 0.8, that's not gonna be easy for me to do. So let's just find a two and a half inch space and I'll score there. So, Two and a half here. If I so if I do, I need a space here. Okay. If I do 0.75. Okay. No. Let's. I want to make this as big as I can, but I want to make it easy. So I'm going to make it. Um, I know that I need one two and a half. So this right here is one two three quarters. So let's make this. I'm gonna cut this off at a quarter. Okay, so there's a quarter that I'm gonna trim off. And then I've got, if I score there, one, one, two and a half, and score there, then I should have one, two, three quarters. So I'm gonna take that off, trim that off, and then we'll score it. Okay. Good enough. If I'm off a little bit, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so now we're going to get the scoreboard out. And we know that we want to score it. We know that we want to score at three quarters and three quarters. That should give us two and a half. So what I'm going to do is score at three quarters, and then I'll measure just to be sure. Okay. So if I do this and then I score at three quarters, that's right there. Right. I score at three quarters. And then if I measure two and a half, maybe I should have scored it. No, that's fine. So one, two and a half would be right here. So right there is where I have to score again. So I'm not gonna have that is well, just over three quarters. So I want to trim just a hair off of here. Make it so much easier. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to trim, 
do this one at three quarters. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have a good spine here. Okay. Okay, let's see if we did that right. I'm a little off, so what did I do? Okay, there's that, and there's that. So I'm just a hair off. So, I think we're gonna score right inside that line and trim. Ah. That's what I think. I think we're gonna score yeah, see, two and a half is right there, so I need to be in. Just in a little bit, maybe right there. And that might do it. If that works, then I can just trim that. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, that works. Okay, so with that in mind, we need to, we can put our scoreboard away. And our cutter. And get it glued in. Now because I'm using Fabri-Tac again because I um whenever you have fabric it just uh, works best. Now what I'm going to do is do the center first. Okay. a little bit in that score edge just because I want um, I want it to stick in there I don't want it to come out that is let's get a little on here and then a little on this side is make sure that that is tucked in and this is tucked in there so that we and that this is flat then we make sure these are glued okay Make sure that there's no that there's no gap there. So and uh, then just remember that our sides are going to go lay over those. So like this, and our other one will lay over. might have to trim this one just a hair. I don't know if it's a little off, if it's a little crooked or something, but this one fits good. Let me see if I have, I could be off. Just off, just, and I don't know if you can see that, just a little bit, but it makes a difference in the, um, in how it sits in here. Maybe I don't have to, but I think I should probably trim just a little. 
so it's not right on that edge. So I'm gonna just actually take my scissors and trim just a smidge off of there. I think I'm just trying to make sure I push it down so that it's not loose. And let's do this side. <clears throat> I want to put enough glue on it so that it holds well, but I don't want it to be seeping out the edges. I got a journal once, I I bought a journal once, and everything came apart because I, I don't think it was glued very well or sewn or whatever. And so it, it makes me nervous to think that somebody would get one of these and it's not held together real well. So I'm pretty particular about putting enough glue um, on there so that it will last many years to come. Now I'm just looking at all my seams and making sure that everything is stuck well and that it all folds really well and holds together. Um, and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop right there and get my pages ready and uh, I think maybe the next thing we want to do is uh, get our signatures um, the way we want them and figure out how many we're going to do. I may need to trim them down now that I've got the cover done. If you look, they're a little bigger. So 
some of them are bigger. So um, we're gonna wanna measure those out and make sure that they fit in here well. But I'm pretty excited, I like the colors. And uh, once we get the signature size figured out correctly, we can move forward and um, get them together and start decorating pages. I like to decorate them before I get them put, I sew them into the journal. Um, but we may decorate some and then sew them in and decorate others as we go.